Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to cumulative frequency curves. What we'll be looking at is not only the curve but from the curve how you can calculate the median or Q2 as it's often known. We'll also be looking at the lower quartile Q1, the upper quartile Q3 and working out the interquartile range which is equal to Q3 minus Q1, the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now what I've got here to demonstrate this is the heights of 50 students measured in centimetres. It's what we call a group frequency table. I'm assuming that you've seen these before. If not, do check out my earlier videos on this. Just to recap though very quickly, what we've got here is this notation where we've got a dash in between two pairs of numbers. If we take this one here for example, 165 with that dash to 175, let's just remind ourselves what it means. If we had say the height, let's say it's given by the letter H then it means that the height is greater than or equal to this lower value here, 165 in this case. And the 175 means that the height is less than 175. So we've got, for instance, in this first interval here, three students that have a height greater than or equal to 145 centimetres but less than 155 centimetres. And similarly here, we've got nine students with a height that is greater than or equal to 155 centimetres, but less than 165 centimetres, and so on. Now, when it comes to cumulative frequency, what do we mean by that? Well, that's what we've got this third column for. Now, if I label that cumulative frequency, then the first value that I put in this column here is in fact this first number here, 3. And what we mean by the 3 in the commutative frequency column is that we've got 3 students with a height less than this upper bound of 155 centimetres. I'll just write less than 155 there, okay, centimetres. Now for the second value here we don't put in this 9 here, we know that we've got 9 students with a height greater than 155 centimetres but less than 165 centimetres. But in the cumulative frequency column we just want to know how many students have a height less than 165 centimetres. And that's going to be the 9 in this class interval plus the further 3 in this class interval, a total of 9 add 3, which is 12. We've got 12 students with a height less than 165 centimetres. Now, you don't want to keep writing this less than all the time down this column. What we tend to do is just write the numbers here. It's up to you if you want to write these inequalities in, but normally we we'll just carry on. And for how many students have a height less than 175 centimetres, it will be to do 21 plus 9 plus 3. Or you could just simply add 21 to the 12. You're going to get exactly the same total, a total of 33 then. 33 students have a height less than 175 centimetres. Next, all I want to do is add the 13 to the 33, which gives me 46. And that's telling me I've got 46 students with a height less than 185 centimetres. This total from 13 back to the 3. And finally, if I add the 4 to the 46, I get 50. 50 students now with a height less than 195 centimetres. And it's always a good check to check that your final value here agrees with the total number of students that you're dealing with. Next, we need to plot these points on a cumulative frequency graph. So you need to set up axes first of all, something like this. You can see my horizontal axis goes from this 
lower value here of 145 centimeters all the way up to our highest height here 195 centimeters and I've got that axis label don't forget that and this vertical axis is always the cumulative frequency axis and I've labeled that from zero up to our total number of students 50 in this particular example and we now plot the points on the graph we take the cumulative frequency and we plot it against the upper bound for each of these classes so for this first one we take 3 and we plot it at 155 so we go to 155 and go up 3 units so each one of these small squares stands for 2 so 3 will be just about there so we're saying three students then have a height less than 155 centimeters. As for the height of 145, you can see we've got no students with a height of less than 145. So you could put a point there. Now for the next value in the table here, 12, we would plot 12 at 165 so if we go to 165 then 12 is going to be here one square above this line here and if we carry on plotting the points on we'll get the following other points and hopefully you can see that we've got some kind of curve coming through here and if we draw that curve on it's going to look like that and so we have a cumulative frequency curve. A cumulative frequency polygon is to join them up with straight lines. But we're not doing that, okay? We're just doing a cumulative frequency curve, which is going to give us better estimations generally of these quantities here, median, lower quartile, and upper quartiles. So talking of which, how do we work out the median or second quartile Q2? Well, to calculate the median, we have to look at the total of our frequencies, which we know is 50, and then take the middle of those 50 values, which is the 25th value. So what we do is go up the cumulative frequency axis to 25, which is going to be there-ish okay and then we project across till we hit the curve when we hit the curve we project downwards until we hit our axis here and this value here is our median value q2 and from this it looks like it's 171.5 each square along here represents one unit. So that's going to be 170. Then we've got 171, and it's between 171 and 172. So I'm going to say it's 171.5 from there. Okay, so that's my estimate, 171.5 centimeters for the median, Q2. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point, you have to take care because I've seen many questions on this kind of thing where they try and trick you maybe into making a mistake here. Quite often on the cumulative frequency axis it might go up to say 60 for instance in an example like this. So it's very tempting to think that you go to the 30th value just by halving the highest value you get on the cumulative frequency axis. It must be half of your value here. All right? So don't fall for that one. Anyway, we take the 25th value in this example and then read off our median here. Now, when it comes to the lower quartile, Q1, we're looking at a quarter the way up this axis to the 50 here. So a quarter of 50 is going to be 12.5. It's just the same as halving 
the distance up here to the median. We had 25 here, so if you halve it, it's going to be 12.5. So to get the lower quartile, we go up to 12.5, so that's going to be, say, somewhere like this. Go across till we hit the curve, and then come down from the curve down to this point here. And that value down here is our lower quartile Q1. And reading from the graph here, it looks like it's in between 165 and 166. I'm going to just say 165.5. 165.5, and that'll be measured in centimeters. Now, as for the upper quartile Q3, what I can do is go to the 50, and just like I went up here, 12 and a half squares, I could come down 12 and a half units. It's essentially three quarters of 50 for that position of Q3. And that's going to be 37.5. So 37.5 is going to be a value about there. So if I go across to the curve, hit the curve, and then project downwards, that's going to be my upper quartile Q3. So we read across then and down, and Q3 turns out to be roughly then 177.8 centimeters. It is only an estimate, so that estimate is going to depend on how smooth your graph is. Now when it comes to working out the interquartile range, the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, then for this example, what we've got is the upper quartile is 177.8 centimeters, and we need to subtract then the lower quartile, which is 165.5 centimeters. And what we get is 12.3 centimeters. Now it's well worth remembering what we mean by this interquartile range. It's got a width of 12.3 centimeters. That's the distance between these two points here. And if we look at the percentage of students with a height in this particular interval or this channel here, it's got to be 50% of students in that width there. It's a measure of how compact they are to the median here. If this was a smaller width, then there'd still be 50% of the students in this channel here. They'll be even more compact towards the median. So this is a good indicator of compactness then to the median. Now not only can you be asked to draw a cumulative frequency curve or calculate the median, lower quartiles, upper quartiles, interquartile range from it, but you could be asked a question similar to this one. To estimate how many students have a height of 180 centimeters or more. And to do that, we'd look up 180 centimetres on this horizontal axis, which for this graph is here. We project upwards from here onto our curve, and then project from here along to our cumulative frequency axis. And what I get here, I can see, is 42. Now, don't make the mistake of saying it's 42 students. Remember, the 42 here would tell us how many students have a height less than 180 centimeters. What we want is 180 centimeters or more. So for this, the number of students, let's just put it here, the number is going to be equal to the total number of students, 50 minus the 42 that we've got from here. And that is equal to eight. Eight students then are estimated from our graph to have 
a height of 180 centimeters or more. So I hope that's given you some idea of how we draw a cumulative frequency curve and the types of questions that you can possibly be asked to work out from the curve.